Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to a thought-provoking episode that delves deep into the interconnected world of education, healthcare, and special needs. So I'm your host, Liana, and today we are honored to have two passionate advocates with us, so Dr. Chen Shiling and also Madam Paraliza Zainal. So hello guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay, so before we start, uh, I would like to get everyone to follow us on social media, sharing this episode with your friends and colleagues and leave a review or comment. So your support helps us reach a wider audience and then continue to continue our mission of spreading awareness and empowerment. Okay, so our, our guest for today, Dr. Chen Shiling and Madam Paraliza Zainal are passionate advocates who have dedicated their careers to empowering individuals with special needs. So first things first, we have Dr. Chen Shiling. So she brings medical expertise and a deep passion for well-being of persons with intellectual disabilities. Her journey from medical school to specializations in intellectual disabilities has uniquely equipped her to address the healthcare needs of this community. And then beside her, we have Madam Paraliza Zainal. On the other hand, she's the founder of MIJ Hub and the driving force behind its unique multidisciplinary curriculum. So her innovative approach to special needs education has nurtured the potential of countless children, making her a trailblazer in the field. Okay, so whether you're new in this journey or a seasoned pro, this podcast offers valuable insights. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first question is for Dr. Chen. Okay, so Dr. Chen, can you tell us more about your remarkable journey from medical school to your specialization in intellectual disabilities? And then um, how did you become deeply passionate about improving the lives of persons with uh, this intellectual disability? Mm, okay, thanks very much, Liana. Um, so for me, I think um, this entire journey actually started many, many years ago when I was actually 17, before I was even a medical student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had actually started volunteering with uh, people with intellectual disability. Um, and it was actually by providence or coincidence, however you want to see it. I had actually wanted to volunteer with children. And at a time, I had wrote into NCSS. Um, and I had said that I wanted to volunteer in an orphanage. And NCSS had wrote back to me to say that, hey, you know, sorry, in Singapore, we have no orphanages. Mm -hmm. So how about going to this place to volunteer with people with intellectual disability? And because I was 17 years old, I thought anything is fine. And so I just decided to just go and give it a shot. Yeah, and to be very honest, when I first stepped into the center, it was run by Minds uh, on a weekend. Mm -hmm. um, on a Sunday afternoon, I was actually really, really taken aback because it was actually my very, very mm -hmm. first encounter with people with intellectual disability. Okay. Yeah, um, but that day was actually a transformative day for me. Yeah, when I stepped in and I, and I met people with intellectual disability, my first thought was to not come back again. But very interestingly, by the end of that two and a half hours, mm -hmm. I felt very touched. Mm -hmm. And I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to go back and volunteer again. Mm -hmm. And um, I then went back every single Sunday oh. yeah, for the next six years of my life um, through medical school. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I only stopped um, volunteering um, when I actually started as a doctor and I graduated from medical school. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was how the journey actually began. Um, and then subsequently, when I was a junior doctor, I stopped volunteering for a couple of years because of all the work that came yeah. along. Um, but in 2010, I went back to volunteer again with minds mm. yeah. and mm. this time around as a doctor mm. so I went back and I said okay now I have an additional skill set I'm a doctor now maybe I can do something yeah. health related mm -hmm. and um, that was how it began I just started running these um, volunteer run health screenings mm -hmm. um, and it was not just for minds but it was for multiple different um, agencies like mm -hmm. APSN Cerebral Palsy Alliance mm -hmm. Down Syndrome mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. um, and then the more I did the more I realised that people with intellectual disability, especially the adults, mm -hmm. had so many health problems that were just not well addressed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that they were facing a lot of difficulties um, mm -hmm. accessing healthcare. Mm -hmm. And that was when I felt like there was a gap that needed to be addressed. Yeah. And um, at that time, I was actually on a completely different path in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was pursuing a different um, 
course of work altogether, mm -hmm. um, a different specialization, a different area of work. Mm -hmm. um, but because I saw this gap, mm -hmm. yeah, I eventually had to make a choice mm -hmm. whether I was going to stay on in the hospital mm -hmm. or whether I was going to step out to try and pursue this. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, I eventually made the choice to actually leave the hospital um, mm -hmm. to pursue this. And since I left the hospital 10 years ago, yeah, I have been actively trying to advocate for mm. this cause mm. and um, basically um, trying to provide healthcare for this um, group of individuals, adults with intellectual disability. Yeah, and um, that was actually how it all began. Oh, wow, yeah. It's been a long journey. Mm. Yeah, it's been a long journey and it's <laughs> still ongoing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, for Madam Paralisa, mm. so next question for you. Um, as the founder of MIG Hub, could you share the principles behind your multidisciplinary curriculum and also your motivation for creating it? So how does it empower special needs children to lead fulfilling lives? Okay, um, I have a son with autism who is now 23 years old. So I think um, the curriculum, the thought behind the curriculum right, is actually how I actually raise him as well. So it builds on the idea of integrating various disciplines and also um, um, academic skills mm -hmm. um, to meet the diverse needs of uh, people with uh, disabilities like autism, Down syndrome, um, GDD and so on. Yeah, so I always believe in having a movement as part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So where I believe in experiential learning because um, the diverse need of our students right, or people with disabilities, right, they need to be able to see, not only to see, but to touch, to hear, to smell and to move. They can be sitting down for about five minutes just hearing the teacher. So how do we um, then educate them but in a form whereby they're able to uh, be able to engage them? We are able to make them aware and therefore apply these skills that we have taught them or the knowledge, or the concept, the knowledge that we actually um, teach them in their life, um, in their future life as well. Yeah, so I believe in having movement. I believe in having social emotional learning as well because the fact that um, most of them, they, are have, they want to be in a safe haven. They want to come to a place where they're accepted and supported. Yeah, so having to feel safe um, and to educate them that, hey, you are in a space whereby you will feel safe. We are accept you as who you are. And that's where the, uh, it opens up the, uh, the whole idea of learning. Because if their emotional is not stable, they are not emotional, they are not able to read to learn. So that's something that you have to tackle first. So I always believe in having that emotional part mm. of them. And the last part is also about functional skills. Um, as much as we want to teach them academic and like, and like numeracy literacy, but there are people who are not able to grab this concept. So how then we can divert them such that they can be independent at the end of the day is also to add the skills part whereby they may not be able to um, read or write, but they're able to do something else. For example, they're able to cook, to bake, to even draw and so on. So it's something that we have to nurture it such that they're able to um, do something out of the skills. So if you're able to draw, they can be a famous artist. You don't, you don't need numeracy to do that, or yeah. you know, only literacy to do that. Yeah, so this is something that we are looking at. Lah. So that's why it's a holistic approach whereby every individuals are able to um, move on in their life, contribute back to the society, and be a uh, meaningful individual. Yeah. Makes sense or not? <laughs> I'm just rattling, <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, Together with like Dr. Chen, I think you yourself, you also, it's a long journey for you mm. to, to be where, where yeah. it is today. Mm. Yeah, so, okay, next question. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, for Dr. Chen, um, yes. earlier you mentioned that uh, you were involved in uh, different uh, organizations mm. like providing health screening and such. Yeah, so um, from there, I understand that you decide to uh, come up with, build, build up um, another charity. Yeah, so maybe you can tell us more about it. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, so like I said, you know, because of all these health screenings that I was doing, I realized that there was this gap in accessing healthcare for adults mm -hmm. with intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've spent the last um, 10 over years yeah, advocating for the healthcare needs of this particular group. Um, and it has actually culminated in me actually establishing a registered charity called Happy Hearts Movement. 
and uh, we actually run a clinical service and a clinic called mm. ID Health mm -hmm. that actually looks after the healthcare needs of adults with intellectual disability as well as their families. Um, and um, what we do in this particular uh, clinical service is that we look after the healthcare needs of adults with intellectual disability in a very holistic way. Mm -hmm. um, like what Farah mentioned yeah. about having to take care of people in a holistic manner, that when we talk about health, we don't just talk about medical needs, mm -hmm. but we talk about biological, psychological, and social needs and social factors mm -hmm. that come together um, to promote good health and good well-being in the individual. Yeah, and um, I think one unique uh, thing about um, our service model is that we also take on the caregivers mm -hmm. as our patients mm -hmm. if they also have uh, complex health needs. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is because the caregivers um, of um, individuals with intellectual disability and individuals with intellectual disability are very, very closely interrelated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One common reason I always, a common example I always give is that um, imagine if you have a 35-year-old child mm -hmm. with um, epilepsy and seizures mm -hmm. and a 70-year-old mother who has recurrent falls. Um, how do you take care of one without mm -hmm. taking care of the other? Yeah. Sure. yeah, if you don't take care of both of their needs as individuals but also as mm -hmm. a pair, mm -hmm. then you can already imagine what's going to happen, right? Yeah, true. yeah son is going to get a seizure. He's going to fall. Mm. Mom is going to try and stop him, protect him, take care of him. She's also going to fall. Well, yeah. And both are then going to fall, end up in the hospital, and maybe they have to end up you know, moving into an institution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not what we want. Mm. So what we then do is that we then take care of the individual's health needs as individuals, but also as a unit. Mm -hmm. So we match the caregiver and care recipient needs so that we can continue to support them to mm -hmm. live in the community mm -hmm. um, for as long as they wish mm -hmm. and as they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's actually what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this Happy Heart Movement, mm -hmm. do you, um, uh, is it a one-man show? Like, do you do it on your own or do you mm -hmm. have like, a team? Yes. Behind. So, um, yeah, when I first started it, just like as with many things, mm. I'm sure with Farah mm. as well, <laughs> it probably started as a one man so. or, yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, and maybe plus the spouse. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that tends to be the way it started. Um, but then now that we actually have formalized it, mm. um, and after all the years of work, I now actually have a team. Um, and we are actually really actively trying to build um, mm -hmm. a system, you know, mm -hmm. um, for the country. So we are working with the government yep. as well as with non-governmental agencies mm -hmm. as well as um, philanthropic organisations as well mm -hmm. to really try to build this up um, for this population in Singapore. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Then how do you? Sorry, I just edited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like that better, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 like that better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not like yeah, yeah. too formal, like, like that better. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then how do you actually like find these uh, families um, who require mm. like this kind of needs? Mm, yeah. So um, they actually get referred to us from multiple different sources. Okay. So one common source, of course, is from. Um, uh, charities and social service agencies that mm. actually support um, people with disabilities. Mm. So, for example, Minds, APSN, mm. you know, mm. Sundeck, Christian Outreach for the Handicap. We will also be very happy yeah. to receive reference yeah. from MIJ Hub. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, from the agencies themselves, we also uh, receive referrals actually from doctors, mm -hmm. from polyclinics, from the mm -hmm. hospitals, mm -hmm. um, because they refer patients to us for us to right. actually assess and manage. Right. Um, we also receive reference from SG Enable, from AIC, mm -hmm. and we also have self-referrals. Mm -hmm. We have walk-ins, we have people who call us, people mm -hmm. who hear about us from um, their friends, and you know, and then they contact us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And then, like, because um, uh, you're, you're a full-time doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. this Happy Heart Movement, you, um, is being uh, done on weekends, or...? Uh, no, so because it is, like I said, and so remember I, I shared earlier that I left the hospital 10 years yeah. ago mm -hmm. to pursue this. So in that sense, um, from that time onwards, I've already been spending uh, significant portions of my time um, yeah. actually trying to um, advocate for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now actually the bulk of my time is actually spent running this charity, um, developing the services, mm -hmm. seeing patients, um, supporting my team, mm -hmm. and also trying to advocate 
um, for this uh, this uh, for this particular population group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, um, I have another area of interest, mm -hmm. which is dementia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I still do a little bit of dementia work with uh, Kutik Park Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's for patients with dementia. dementia. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay Ken. and last question for this uh, first part. How you guys met? <laughs> it's not in the thing. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so interesting. <laughs> but interesting. Okay, okay, okay. How we met? Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. How we met? Okay. I, I got a call from Madam Rahayu Mazam. Okay. You know, um, so she was saying, "If hey, I want to meet this um, uh, doctor, Shen Shiling, mm. um, you know, I think both of you are in this particular space. You know, I think you'll be a lot to talk about and something to uh, to collaborate moving forward." Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, why not?" So we met. Um, mm -hmm. at one of the events that she actually, um, mm -hmm. a meeting I think, yeah. in a meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's where we met and then that's why you're here. That was like how many years ago? Maybe about two, maybe yeah. two <laughs> years, about that. I think yeah. yeah. Two years, yeah. But uh -huh. we just clicked uh, because same frequency mm -hmm. and uh -huh. we are doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh -huh. are yeah. doing the same course. Yeah, yeah the same course. Yeah. 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 I was grateful yeah. uh, to have met um, Dr. Chen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay.